So, all right. So, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, last final day of the 2021 Humanistic Management Conference. I'm uh, very happy to uh, welcome you, um, our China chapter from the Humanistic Management Network. We've already had our groups talking, our chapters talking from uh, all the way from Colombia in the West to Japan in the East, uh, from Poland in the North, and later on today we will have South Africa in the very South. So we do have the whole globe covered uh, with the Humanistic Management Network and we're very happy to have the China chapter as one of our uh, country organizations in this global Humanistic Management Network. In that sense, um, the time is running, the clock is ticking, and I don't want to take any time away from uh, the presentation of the, the China chapter. So a very warm welcome uh, here from Geneva, Switzerland, where we are headquartered, uh, to you in Ningbo, um, uh, Pingping. It's a great pleasure to have you. Thanks so much to your speakers and to you for organizing the session for our network. And uh, please, I'm handing over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Ernst? I can hear okay. you well. Okay, good, good. Um, Alim Beveridge, one of our panel members is sitting with me. Um, thank you very much for coming to our session. Uh, we are one of the younger members um, on the Humanistic Management Network. Um, oh, who is... Dr. Wong said he does not hear us. Uh, okay. How about now? Is it better now? Can you hear me better? All right. Can, but then you can all hear me, right? Can you hear me now? Dr. Wong? Okay, good, good. Can you hear me? Um, anyway, so the theme for this year's um, uh, conference is solutions. We invited Dr. Uh, Mr. Wu Wunyanbo of Good Arc, a local company, this morning to um, let me share my screen here. Let me see. Uh, where's the share screen? Yeah, this one. This one. Uh, share. Okay. Uh, this morning, he introduced the eight modules that he used to um, build the company into a happy enterprise. How that, why not, it's not a page. Okay. Um, so the eight modules are in the middle and the central part is humanistic education and the 17 UN SDG goals are around it. And he talked about the relationships uh, between the eight modules that the company uses to build itself into a happy enterprise and then the 17 SDG goals. Anyone, if you're interested in it, we can share that information later. But um, Harvard is writing a case on the company and the Central TV is also releasing a program on the company at the end of this year. And Mr. Wu himself, is recently uh, uh, elected to be one of the 100 most influential businessmen in the world uh, uh, between 2020 and 2021. So uh, because of his achievement and also because what the company has, um, these are the eight modules, but uh, what the company has achieved, Mr. Wu has got a lot of recognition and a lot of companies are learning from him. But um, he always says that the reason that he's being, um, you know, able to achieve that is because of the traditional Chinese. So we today actually are very fortunate to be able to invite Dr. Wang, uh, Wang Jianbao from Peking University. He's a researcher. I mean, he's a, um, the head of the um, Institute of um, uh, Humanistic research center and also a researcher under a couple of other organizations. He's been becoming very influential talking and promoting uh, awareness of the uh, Confucianism recently in China. So he would be introducing uh, Confucianism and explain why Confucian humanism is so um, 
influential and so um, effective in helping companies to achieve that. And after that, after the break, we'll have a panel that will be um, introduced, I mean, sharing the experience and opinions, and also, of course, uh, for questions. So we'll start with the keynote speaker, and then for an hour and uh, or so, then we'll we'll have the Q and A of the panel. All right. So, Dr. Wang, please, the mic is yours now. Yeah, Professor Fu. So nice to be here, and uh, it's a big honor for me to be here. And uh, good morning to colleagues in Europe, especially. I'm so glad to see Matthias Nittenfeuer, uh, Dr. Professor Nittenfeuer. How are you, sir? <laughs> good morning. And uh, also good afternoon to all the colleagues and friends in China. Uh, so I would like to share something I'm thinking about for several years regarding Confucian. Do you need uh, to, excuse me, Dr. Wang, do you need to open this? Uh, do you have PowerPoint or I have given yes. you, I'll say you yes. can share it now. I know I will interrupt your one and the study the mine. So is that okay? Can you see the shared screen? Go ahead. Yes, it's starting. Oh, yes. oh, super, super. Yeah. Um, I will. Good. So now is a uh, full screen, right? From your side. Um, good. Yeah. Uh, Matthias suggested that the Confucian entrepreneur uh, should not be directly uh, translated. Rushan could be more understandable uh, with more meaningful content between the West and the East uh, dialogue. So, uh, but anyway, for the better understanding, especially somebody uh, I'm neither really nor able to study Chinese. I would use the Confucian entrepreneur, past, present, and the future for some uh, brief discussion today. It's only a uh, brief. So thanks again for the introduction uh, from Professor Fu and for this kind uh, invitation, you know. Uh, so I will, yeah, first thanks uh, to University of Nottingham, uh, every colleague. I know it's very difficult to organize this event, especially on the uh, pandemic uh, situation, you know. Um, so happy Thanksgiving, anyone, and anyhow to everybody, yeah. Uh, the outline of my presentation uh, could be go on like this, Part one, from Confucian humanism to spiritual humanism. Part two, spiritual roots of Rushang, uh, the Confucian entrepreneur. Part three, who are Rushang? Part four, what are Rushang heritage? The last but not the least, uh, we could uh, uh, discover a little bit Rushang in the future. Um, so I'm not sure how's our audience you know, some audience know much uh, uh, well of Confucianism, but some audience uh, don't know much. So I, uh, it depends. Uh, I should uh, uh, check where, which part I should take more time. Let's see. So I think I have 90 minutes or something like this, Professor Fu. If uh, any problem regarding the signal, any problems regarding the communication, please interrupt me and remind sure. me immediately. I will, I, I will, thank you, thank you, okay, uh, it's fine now. Okay, otherwise I will be in front of the screen and talk in the air, you know, it's really sure. interesting, <laughs> but very challenging. Yeah. Sorry, okay. sorry, yes, yes, I will, I will let you know. If Okay, go ahead, just rest assured, I will let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to uh, investigate some models of the Confucian entrepreneurs, Ru Shang, from X age to the second millennium and now, with an outlook uh, for more ethical 
and a more effective new business civilization. Uh, my friend in Tübingen University uh, reminded me that new business civilization is too Chinese to be understood. But anyway, uh, we uh, share the new era uh, calling something new. So uh, we should surpass the economic man rationality, instrumental rationality, so in the future. By rediscovering the core value of Confucius, that is Ren, humanity, or benevolence, according to the previous translations, uh, with a perspective of spiritual humanism rather than secular humanism. It's a very difficult uh, topic. So I would uh, briefly introduce the Confucian humanism contemporary development to spiritual humanism. Uh, generally speaking, we have three epochs uh, from uh, Duke Zhou period. Uh, that means uh, 1000 BC uh, to the end of Han Dynasty. It's nearly, you know, uh, 1500 years. In its first epoch, Confucius succeeded to develop a comprehensive system of moral, ethics, arts, and politics. Uh, from the righteous and the musical teachings with transcendental humanism. Uh, this transcendency is uh, tricky. It's kind of imminent transcendency. Uh, that's the first one. But, you know, Han Dynasty collapsed with a big shock to us. But we still call us Han uh, people, you know, after this uh, 1800 years. Um, in a second epoch, the fostering and help uh, enjoyed a developing a system of uh, metaphysics expanding into Asia and cultivating a Confucian culture sphere, including Japan, of course, Korea, Vietnam, and so forth. You, you know, on the Korea currency, once on the Yong, Wong, or Japanese currency turns on the uh, yen. They all have Confucian uh, figures or masters or Confucian on the uh, on it uh, to uh, uh, justify this heritage, you know. So Confucius is not only uh, belonging to China mainland, but beyond uh, to East Asia. Uh, it's a local value, but probably with a global uh, significance. In its third epoch, Confucianism lost its ideological leadership, uh, retreating to the uh, background of daily life in cultural China. It became sort of a mindset or sort of a civil religion, according to uh, Robert Barra. Okay. Um, for the third epoch, uh, you know, uh, Confucianism is represented by three distinct and distinguished generations. Uh, my teacher, my teacher's teacher, and my teacher's teacher's teacher. I don't know how to speak in English. The first generation uh, was represented by Xiong Shili, of course, and uh, Ma Yifu, uh, Liang Shumin. Uh, uh, they know, uh, very well the traditional classics, uh, but they know little about the uh, Western references. So they are still referring to the spiritual resources of Buddhism. The second generation uh, was represented by Mo Zong San, etc. Uh, they know much of the Greek traditions, uh, like uh, the Western philosophy traditions, but they know little of Hebrew traditions. For example, especially uh, Xu Fu Guan, uh, he uh, worked at uh, Donghai University with big tension, uh, has big tension with the, uh, with the university authority. As a prominent member of the third generation of contemporary Neo-Confucianism, uh, Professor Tu Min, for example, has deeply penetrated the mindset of the Western world 
not only referring to the uh, Hellenic traditions, but also Abrahamic traditions, including Christian and Islamic. Uh, another uh, great scholar is uh, Professor Liu Shuxian. Uh, they all got their PhD uh, in USA. Uh, so spiritual humanism is the fruit of the uh, continuous endeavors of the three generations from Xiongxili to Mo Zongsan uh, to Tu Yiming and Liu Shuxian beyond. Implying, implying in ecological turn, initiated from the Confucius doctrine, unity of heaven and man, uh, you know, Tian trans was translated to heaven roughly, you know, but it's not heaven at all, you know. So as well as pledging in eternal peace only to the renaissance of all on the heaven and the harmony without the uniformity traditions. The picture showed uh, the meeting uh, in last uh, February, 26 February uh, in uh, California, you know, uh, is American Confucius, uh, Boston Confucius, especially uh, on the north and on the south side of the Hudson River uh, is a academic joke, but a meaningful joke. Uh, the spiritual humanism and the, the uh, global significance, you know, as per Professor Tu Min, all X-Age civilizations are going through their own distinctive forms of transformation in response to the multiple challenges of modernity. Everyone should uh, be transformed or self-criticized. Uh, uh, one of the most crucial questions uh, they face is what wisdom they can offer to reorient the human development trajectory of the modern world in light of the growing environmental crisis, uh, as well as some other crises, for example, the geopolitics and nationalism and the global governance, the gap between the wealthy and the poor, uh, sustain sustainable uh, development, and uh, the social mobility and so forth. Uh, this is the uh, general problematic. Axel civilizations, I think most uh, friends know, is from uh, uh, Jaspers, a great scholar at Heidelberg University. So I summarized in this sort of uh, diagram, Hebrew one, ancient Hellenic one, Indian one, and the Chinese one. So, uh, I want to make it uh, roughly uh, more understandable, you know, uh, like God, reason, emptiness, and the saint. So uh, regarding the literature review, maybe uh, if you have interest, you can go back to Jaspers, uh, Parsons, Benjamin Schwartz, and Tu uh, and so forth. Uh, for Hebrew and the Indian tradition, they pursue their life in that world. <laughs> For Hellenic and Chinese, maybe we pursue the life, uh, the, this world of the life. Especially in China, uh, sage tradition is more significant. Um, regarding the, all the actual traditions, uh, according to Professor Levinson, uh, he worried, he concerned, Confucianism is facing the biggest trouble and suffering the most, uh, would be put in the museum as a mummy. Uh, he said for the mineral faith of all actual uh, traditions, including his own faith, Judaism, yet he believed that the funeral of Confucius would be the first held. Actually, he has not happened after six decades. Uh, it's surviving and even more uh, is flourishing from the uh, dissertation of Dr. Cheng Huanzhang of Columbia University, uh, the economic principles of Confucius and his school to Robert Bella, Tokugawa religion, the cultural cultural roots of modern Japan. 
uh, that uh, beyond that, nowadays the Confucian economic sphere (CES), as per Professor uh, Bing Xiang of CKGSB, Hong Kong Graduate School of Business, uh, my school, in 2018, uh, this CES includes mainland China, Japan, Korea, Hong Kong SAR, Macau SAR, and the Taiwan area. Uh, we called it eight sisters. Uh, the overall GDP of these eight countries and areas as a sphere surpassed the USA after nearly two centuries lagging behind the modernized Western bloc. Um, so in that case, this kind of economic uh, rising could reshape the global uh, situation and the governance with some challenges, of course. Uh, we had this uh, kind of uh, uh, predict uh, several years ago, and the current situation uh, proves more or less that uh, our uh, concern is somehow meaningful, is somehow meaningful. Uh, Spiritual humanism brings together four dimensions of the commonly shared human experience, self, community, earth, and heaven. In order to define the highest manifestation of human flourishing, uh, is a local value, uh, but it, it could have some uh, global significance through dialogues among civilizations for the human community. Uh, we are practicing something dialogical dialogue instead of dialect dialogue, you know. It's also beyond the communication rationality of Habermas. A dialogical dialogue is sort of send to send the unisons with other civilizations. Um, Professor, uh, uh, Carl Jaspers, has moved forward on the shoulder of Professor uh, Max Weber. Max Weber still has something uh, European centralism, but uh, Jaspers is more open-minded to concede all these four X-Age civilizations. However, however, we are uh, discussing something more beyond the actual age civilizations, including some indigenous civilizations, uh, like the local indigenous, indigenous people in New Zealand, in North America. So in this year, we, we are glad to see that uh, at the cabinet of uh, uh, Biden administration, they have uh, a minister from uh, indigenous American India, and uh, for New Zealand government, they have an indigenous minister of Maori people. So that means not only actual age civilization, maybe we are moving to the second actual age uh, period. So it, it's according to uh, Professor Cousins. He tried this hardly, hardly in 1970s at the UN. The Confucian core values, of course, is this so-called five common principles, uh, Wuchang, uh, which have had exerted the shaping influence of the mind and heart of the Chinese uh, populace as well as the elite. But the mind and heart is also very, very difficult for the Western people to understand uh, the consciousness at the heart the goodness at the heart, the imminent transcendence, is all too Chinese uh, to be understood. Uh, but anyway, these habits of the heart shape, are shaping and will shape our daily life, including business life, political ethics, uh, academic life, everything for the future, as it has done in the past uh, millenniums. So, uh, that's a, how to say, mystery of Chinese culture. Regarding humanity, I would go a little bit of detail 
details regarding three layers of Ren. First, Confucius should learn from the best of enlightenment values, such as rationality, liberty, legality, and human rights. Learning, not teaching, is manifested by Confucian golden rule. Do not do unto others what you would not have them do unto you. So Confucius is the only spiritual tradition without professional priests, monks, uh, gurus, and so forth, uh, without the, the motivation to teach somebody else, to expand us to the world. So it's totally different. It's just learning, not teaching. That's the golden rule. The second is Confucian culture entity should establish the identity of culture man via sympathy, justice, ritual, and social harmony. So we have been losing our cultural identity in the past uh, hundred years. Somebody said since Ming Dynasty, somebody said since Song Dynasty. We can't, we are not really not able to build up a cultural identity. That's a tragedy for this uh, confusion to fear. Thirdly, in the new area, all humanity should seek and embrace ecological humanism. Spiritual humanism manages some unique contributions to this new trinity, uh, like I mentioned before. It's called answerable cosmic doctrine or answerable cosmicism. It's according to Professor uh, Raymond Panica. Raymond Panica is so great. He even plus seal Seal anthropocosmic cosmic doctrine. Uh, without the seal, we are nobody. But for Confucian tradition, it's sort of the secular as sacred, according to Professor uh, Fingerich. So it's more difficult, more confusing, and more challenging for us to understand and follow the seal anthropocosmic cosmic doctrine. Uh, <laughs> Not only this kind of uh, 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 anthropocentrism, you know, is so uh, 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 challenging. The planet doesn't need a, a human being at all. Okay, global significance, uh, as I mentioned before, these three ones. Harmony without the uniformity, or on the heaven, unity of heaven and man. But the translation is so ugly and so confusing. So Professor Roger Ames, he had a new book to be launched in this month, or maybe next month. Uh, he wants to, he want, he's so ambitious and so successful uh, to rebuild the uh, the classical Confucian uh, philosophy and the core concepts. Uh, he wants to uh, reinterpret everything uh, beyond the past one or two centuries since the priests came to China in 19th century. Anyway, the golden rule is uh, do not do unto others what you would not want us to do un unto you, uh, but it's so difficult. Uh, for us to realize that uh, this, the positive ways in order to establish myself, I help others to establish themselves. In order to make myself prominent, I help others to be prominent. That's called Confucian improvement. Uh, not only the Plato improvement, the Italian economist, uh, that means common prosperity is the uh, long calling for the Chinese people. Not today, but since the beginning of our organic solidarity, uh, you know, it's not a nation state. Uh, according to Professor, uh, the French guy, uh, the French scholar Durkheim, it's an organic and organic solidarity. So, anyway, Confucianism supplies 
a universal language. You know, all the religious languages are not universal. So, but learning to be human is sort of universal language. No matter you want to be a Christian, a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or even a Marxist. So first, you should learn to be human. That means we have some basic common foundation to have our dialogues. Uh, learning, not teaching, something like this. Seeking knowledge, even unto China, according to Hadith. The second is the fiduciary communities, uh, like Professor Martin Pooper and though. So from that, we can explore something regarding this uh, uh, ecological, uh, environmental uh, protection, as well as the, uh, how to say, uh, all on the heaven and something, or a shared future with the same common uh, destiny, something like this, uh, to surpass the limitation and the boundaries of nation states. It's initiated from Europe, you know, from especially from German. Uh, the, finally, is a, a theory of ecology, you know, responsive and responsible communication between humankind and nature, beyond the logic of domination, is hence made possible. Is possible. So uh, you should uh, make the fire by the natural way, not feel the fire from God and the punish it laid on for a good purpose. You know, a big tension between good and evil. Uh, that's another tradition, but the Confucius tradition is totally uh, harmonious, you know. Uh, for this uh, theory of ecology, uh, we could say uh, in the first uh, epoch, second epoch, and uh, un until now, we have this continuous tradition. Like why I mean, I insisted that even plants and the roof tiles all have spiritual lives as we do. Uh, something like this. Um, for Professor Tu Min, he published a good paper on Dead Loose 2014, American Academy of Arts and Sciences. A big impact for Chinese uh, Academy. Uh, on 5th August 22, there was a seminar uh, held uh, in Beijing. Uh, we started to discuss this, uh, uh, how to say, uh, ecological uh, ecology civilization uh, up to now nearly two decades, two decades, okay. And also practice. Uh, he was invited by the, uh, the French uh, president, uh, Francois, Francois Hollande, in 2015, and uh, delivered a speech on behalf of Confucianism uh, on the summit of climate uh, conscience, uh, you know, to sign the Paris Agreement. Unfortunately, the uh, Trump administration quit from this agreement. Let's see for the future. Uh, also, we uh, had something uh, like uh, International Confucian Ecological Alliance, a branch of the International Religious Ecological Alliance created by the Prince Philip, uh, Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. So that's the background for my talk. Uh, we must uh, discuss Confucian entrepreneur from the background of philosophy and the religion. But this religion is not only the one God belief, a Hebrew uh, tradition religion. It's a kind of uh, a broader meaning, including Buddhism and Confucianism, as well as some uh, indigenous traditions. It's not a kind of uh, one God belief religion as mi misunderstood by generations and generations in China. It's a tragedy, it's a disappointing consequence. Okay, uh, come to our job. So, Max Weber problematic, belief, behavior, and the business. So, uh, 3B, uh, the Protestant uh, ethic and the uh, 
you know, capitalism uh, spirit. So according to Marx Weber, it's very difficult to explain the capitalism and the, uh, the market economy in China, right? Uh, Professor Yuyin Shi, uh, sorry, he passed away uh, on 1st August of this year. He copied or he imitated this kind of uh, uh, paradigm, uh, Weber paradigm, the China modern uh, religious ethic and the uh, commercial people spirit, you know. Um, the more significant and the meaningful is the triadic court, Confucian ethics, Industrial East Asia and the Max Weber, edited by Professor Tui Min. I'm translating this book into Chinese uh, for more people to understand what we are talking. You know, since Max Weber up to now, the study on Confucian entrepreneur has lasted more than 100 years. Not from today, <laughs> not from last uh, decade, you know. Actually, it, it has lasted 100 years, including uh, Professor Newton Fear is doing now. Uh, I've summarized like from Bella's uh, conjecture to Mark Farquhar prophecy. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Robert Bella, uh, he wrote uh, his dissertation on Tokugawa religion, the cultural roots of modern Japan. Uh, that such an ethic is profoundly favorable to economic uh, rationalization was a major point of Weber's study of Protestantism. And we must say that it seems similarly favorable in Japan, blah, blah. But the, the situation is more complex. Gears has described the inner-worldly asceticism of the Muslim merchants of Java, which is certainly related to to their economic success, but hardly sufficient to guarantee a successful industrialization in Indonesia. On the other hand, such an ethic certainly seems favorable, if not essential, to industrialization, at least in its early stage. It's found not only in Protestantism and Japan, but in communism as well. In each case, the importance of religious rationalization and the reinforcement is very, very considerable. So that's Bella conjecture. Mark Farquhar, this great uh, scholar, he was born in Lahore of Pakistan. You know, I worked in Lahore two years, so I, I'm really fond of him. He pointed out, he predicted as a prophet in 1980, he said, if the four modernization policy succeeds in transforming China over the next few decades, now four decades today, an economic powerhouse will rise in East Asia, by which standard, uh, by which standard, the economic miracle of South Korea, Singapore, and so forth, would seem like solar flares against the sun. So it's he he's right, of course. Mark Farquhar is really, really great scholar. If a businessman can follow his profit in 1980 to invest in China, he will make a big fortune, you know, to ride the boom of the time, uh, the post confucian challenge. So that's that's the balance conjecture to uh, uh, Mark Farquhar prophecy. Uh, beyond, beyond the Max Weber paradigm. And now is the discourse of Tu Weimin, Confucian entrepreneur, uh, discourse on Confucian uh, entrepreneur. We started this discussion since 2012, owing to the help of Karl Stiftung from Germany, especially the kindness and uh, uh, favor of uh, Professor Newton Fear. We did this 10 years for this discourse on Confucian entrepreneur, because why we use the big word entrepreneur uh, discourse, because it's very, very difficult to organize a dialogue 
between the scholars and the Confucian entrepreneurs. We can't find any entrepreneurs has this enlightenment or self-awareness to recognize, to admit that they are a Confucian uh, entrepreneur. They are neither willing nor able to do that, unfortunately. Anyway, conclusion, many professions won down. The Confucian traditions enduring concern with question of first division of labor, like measures, feng gong, uh, is an organic solidarity. So second, resource allocation, marriage supply and demand. Uh, then the control and of monopolies, anti-monopoly, actually monopoly long done, initiated from measures. Uh, from our classics, the maintenance of public welfare, uh, and then its environmentalist attachment to the fate of the mirror of things general. Uh, my friend from Germany reminded us mirror of things are totally meaningless for the Western people to understand. <laughs> anyway, we have to use our language. So the yin and the yang must be connected, uh, be married. That means the philosophy of Confucius decides that the free market must be carried on. We must conduct anti-monopoly against, especially against the government monopoly, you know, since Yan Tielun, the debate on iron and salt. We can't explore this today. So just more than mere reluctant concession to these worldly realities of business, this worldly, according to uh, Jaspers, not that worldly, no heaven. Confucianism indeed is not a trusty old set of conservative dogmas. You know, it's a big misunderstanding. It's a living tradition with centuries of business experience and innovations. It's not only centuries, but the millenniums. So Professor Yuyin Shi is not that professional and right, you know, since the Ming Qin, Ming Dynasty and Qin Dynasty, we have Confucian entrepreneur. Then how can we judge Zigong in 500 BC? So as far back as the great learning, Confucian texts have been oriented towards practice to establish oneself as the foundation. Xiu Shen is the foundation, self-cultivation, and then contributing yourself to family, community, state, and peace on the heaven simultaneously and spontaneously. Community is added by two men. Professor DeBerry from Columbia University, he joked that we can't find the community in the classics, great learning. But since Professor Tui Min told us again and again, and we are Okay. Him. And we believe the hello. It's otherwise the Confucian ethic is mafia ethics. It's beyond the nation state. Otherwise, the Confucianism is sort of nationalism. It's no. The logic of the Great Learning can be stated as follows: Myself is the point of departure from the emperor to the common person. Each should regard self-cultivation as the root. In concrete terms, self-cultivation is to trans transcend the privatized self-centeredness uh, to the public good, including business ethics, including academic uh, responsibilities, including uh, political ethics, and so forth. Uh, you know, Rushang is simply a businessman uh, who embraces Confucian values, but the concept can obviously be defined as narrowly or as broadly as we choose. So it's very difficult uh, to say, Rushang, you know, you cannot be a transcendental one or, you know, even Confucius will sigh before his death. How can somebody say he's a perfect gentleman or profound person or Junzi? Uh, so it's an endless job to self-cultivate. To self it's only 
appearing at the restless horizon. So, but on the other hand, Wyoming is a famous victim that scholars, farmers, artisans, and merchants pursue different occupations, but share a common Dao. Reminds us that the Confucian way is open to all business people and non-business people alike. So it's not only business ethic problems in our context, it's also including everybody, uh, including scholars, uh, uh, politicians, uh, businessmen, uh, artisans, and so on, farmers. So how to uh, uh, share a common doubt, how to learn to be human, uh, how to uh, establish uh, an imminent transcendence. Otherwise, otherwise is anxiety of transcendence. Anxiety. You are always nervous. You don't have anything, any feeling of safety. You always feel you are in something uncertainty. Uh, it's kind of anxiety of transcendence. That's the problem, or that's the challenge of Professor Di Zeho. Sorry, uh, I'm sad that he passed away uh, in this month. Yeah, it's anxiety, a challenge of transcendence. So, to even put this in contemporary terms, today, uh, Russia is best defined as a politically, socially, and culturally engaged entrepreneur of a certain type. She presents the intellectual cream of the corporate uh, crop, assuming the relate, uh, responsibilities of public intellectual food, uh, while remaining uh, actually conscious of the power she possesses. You have more resources. You have more responsibilities. Uh, the, how to say, uh, the uh, arrogance of power, including the arrogance of money, including the arrogance of consciousness, including the arrogance of knowledge. So we have to overcome all this arrogance. Um, so maybe many people is on the way to be a Rushan, okay? Uh, with the burden of real world responsibility. Is it according to uh, De Barry from Columbia University? Um, so, uh, for the uh, Rushan uh, models, we say we have to go at the, uh, uh, you know, uh, actual age, 500 BC, and the Lu Xiangshan at the second millennium, 1000 1, AD, and the modern one like Shipshava Ichi, Zhang Jian, uh, Yu Ko Chong in Korea and so forth. Uh, that's, we, uh, back to the comfortable living person here and now, uh, the left is uh, Shubhsawa Ichi, Analyx and Abacus. The right is uh, Shisaido from Japan since 1872. Fu Sun Tang is from the Book of Change. Uh, both has nobility of spirit and business acumen is this was translated by Jonathan Keir. I'm not sure it can be understood by the English speakers or not. Anyway, let's use this, go on. So that's the spiritual root of confusion. All many professions, but one Dao. Uh, now we, we came to some uh, easy topics. Uh, who are Rushan? Zigong, of course the original Lu Shang, no argument. Lu Shang Shang is a little bit uh, debate. Lu Shang as a vacation. The modern Lu Shang, the Confucian economic sphere, uh, like uh, I mentioned, Zhang Jian, typically, Shibasawa uh, Ichi, is kind of humanistic wisdom and business acumen. I uh, translate a little bit uh, differently. And uh, the he Hero merchant uh, from Korea. It's not from me, it's from Harvard University, East West Center. They uh, make a judgment that hero merchant could be the identity of Korean Confucian entrepreneur. Who else? That's a good question. 
we can discuss. So, Duan Mu Zi Gong, the original Rushan in the Axel Age. Uh, Duan Mu Zi, is, his family name is Duan Mu, and his given name is Zi, and his scholar, academic name is Zi Gong. With his more famous given name, Zi Gong, is actually is a, some kind of another you know, given name. It's a, academic given name, or is uh, after juvenile, you have something from your senior uh, generations, like your father's friend or your teacher give you a, some kind of academic name, was a highly successful businessman. As both Sima Tian, uh, Sima Tian's biographies of uh, merchants of Shi Ji, uh, records of the grand historian, uh, and Confucius himself attested. But he was, he was also a leading Confucian intellectual in his own right. Whatever subsequent disputes may have arisen in the Confucian tradition concerning the proper definition of Lushan, Zigong is a more or less uh, no, no argue. According to the Amulex and the Sima Qian's, uh, the biographies of abstracts of Confucius of Shi Ji, Zigong was 31 years younger than Confucius. Maybe we should not go to so many details. Uh, he changed the history of China, actually. He ended the period, the spring and autumn. And he started the beginning of the Warring States period. Uh, he did a great uh, diplomatic job uh, by manipulate uh, hegemony among the Warring States, like today, among Qi Kingdom, Lu, Wu, Yue, and Jin. These five states uh, where, uh, how to say, uh, manipulated or misguided by Zigong to protect the interests of Lu Kingdom. So that's a big debate between the Kenny way and the hegemony. This is not our topic today. Zigong is a true person, not a legend. You know, he's from this uh, Hebei city of Henan province, Xun County. Uh, Zhang village um, is big flood this year, unfortunately, big flood. And uh, he was uh, most loyal dis dis disciple and, uh, you know, and the only one to accompany the master across the full arc of his uh, uh, much development. He was able to resolve many of the ongoing practical difficulties which arose from Confucius and his school. You know, money, food, and so forth, transportation and accommodation, you know. Uh, the Confucius uh, starved for one week, for seven days, no food. Uh, it's a big story. And uh, he was an outstanding student as well. Uh, Zigong is the original Rushan in the actual period. He was an elegant speaker and a talented diplomat. Uh, you know, he changed many things. No any businessman today can have his ambitions and success uh, at his period. At his period. Um, so, of course, he has shortcoming. The biggest uh, Shortcoming is he's too clever. So according to Confucius tradition, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, he cannot inherit the book learning as well as the uh, Tao of the uh, uh, Confucius school, but uh, he's still uh, one of the 12 philosophers. Uh, uh, in the Confucian tradition. So, Zigong, of course, was politically engaged and big success of academy and the big su success of uh, uh, business as well. So now we can uh, realize who is Rushan, how can we define a Rushan or Confucian entrepreneur properly, according uh, a Rushan model, Zigong. Um, uh, 
Professor DeBerry said, in other words, the entire burden falls on the self-cultivation and the self-transformation of the noble man Jensen. So uh, nobody's business, uh, academic job, or political job. And all professions, but the one dog. Uh, this is regarding Tsugong. I mentioned all these uh, uh, models to uh, justify the definition of uh, Lu Shang of uh, Confucian entrepreneurs. Lu Shang Shan is uh, more difficult to be discussed. Uh, in the second millennium, the early Sufi age, according to Muslim tradition. Uh, so uh, I don't want to uh, introduce uh, Lu Shang Shan uh, details here, you know. Uh, he's the owner of a pharmacy, buying and selling, and uh, he knows, uh, say, healthy work-life balance, and the big family, you know, many generations living together under the same roof. And of course, he's a big scholar. Yeah, Mozun Shan even said, uh, a loose, deep theoretical understanding of Mencius thought. No one since Mencius has understood the Mencius like Lu Xiang uh, No one since Lao Tzu has understood the Lao Tzu like uh, Wang Bi. No one since uh, Zhuang Zi has understood the Zhuang Zi uh, like uh, uh, the, oh, who is uh, understand Zhuang Zi in the Wei and the Jin uh, dynasties. Yeah, so something like this. Mm. Guo Xiang, yeah, like uh, Guo Xiang to understand the Zhuangzi. Guo Xiang no, knows Zhuangzi better than Zhuangzi himself, somebody said. But also knows that he embodied the Manchu spirit in his everyday life, which naturally extended to his business dealings as well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Zhu Xi, Master Zhu, is also a businessman. He, he's quite successful for publishing business. You know, he controls the quality and he signed law for the printing and his students did the uh, marketing and uh, the distribution. So Zhu Xi and his school made good money from the publishing business. As such a big scholar of Zhu Xi, he can also do business as well. So Lu Xiangshan, uh, understand the business world, and uh, he concerned the welfare of the common people, and uh, and he has something uh, like uh, the economy as well, uh, especially uh, you know the concept of ever normal granary as a legacy of the Confucian ec economic principles survived into modern times. Some scholars have added that a version of loose reforms was adopted in the modern United States in the form of 1933 Agricultural Adjustment Act, AAA, you know, to purchase the uh, agriculture uh, products uh, at the harvest year and uh, sell out. Uh, at the bad year. This, uh, you know, act uh, has helped American uh, economy out of the Great Depression and provided, by chance, maybe, a material basis for both the New Deal and the successful uh, American Second World War effort and so forth. You can check the details from uh, the dissertation of Columbia University in 1912 by Dr. Cheng Guan Zhang. Lu's contribution to humanity, however, stretched far beyond agriculture and uh, some other things as well. Uh, and uh, as uh, the root, as the root of Lu's practical philosophy was a deep love of ordinary human beings. Uh, and the humanistic engagement with the world. 
He was a big mayor of a city and in Tong, uh, in Song Dynasty as well. Yeah, at Hubei province. Mm. <clears throat> so I think uh, for Lu Xiangshan, we have some uh, good discussion further in the future. Uh, actually, I want to put more time on the research of Lu Xiangshan. So far, no big study and research on Lu Xiangshan uh, in the academic world. The modern Russian Confucian economic sphere. Of course, many Russian Confucian entrepreneurs in the first and the second millennium, not only Lu Xiangshan and the Tong, uh, Song Dynasty. The, the another famous one is uh, Pu Shougen at the end of the South Song Dynasty. His behavior nearly destroyed and actually completely destroyed the uh, Song Dynasty uh, during the invasion of Mongolia uh, at that pe period. So a businessman terminated a dynasty. That's the story of Chinese businessman in the history. We came to the modern Russia and the Confucian economic sphere. Maybe we have uh, uh, another 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, Zhang Jian uh, at Nantong City. You know, uh, 12th November 2020, President Xi Jinping of PRC paid a visit to Zhang Jian and uh, praised him. So it, uh, gave, it gave a big signal for this year economy in China, like the common prosperity as well. The donation of Alibaba, the donation of Tencent, uh, 100 billion RMB and so forth. Uh, so Zhang Jian became uh, very, very hot in China again uh, after, you know, nearly 100 years. And nobody cares him uh, in the normal life. Zhang Jian was born in 1853 and uh, passed away in 1926. So he's a uh, the nerd tycoon or say Zhuang Yuan Chie Jiang. You know, the success I don't need to mention here, uh, dozens mark the leading companies and uh, many, many schools, uh, contribution to Chinese industrialization and education, uh, uh, many uh, cases. And he also has a personal commitment to humanistic learning as well, summarized in Zhang's eventual nickname, uh, uh, the nerd tycoon. But he also uh, used the, the book of change as a da shen, something like this. Uh, shen is so difficult to understand. Actually, it's a spiritual root of Chinese business ethics, uh, emerging or uh, born or uh, hand, uh, how to say a concrete living person here and now living. His understanding of economy is also different like uh, uh, family finance. He think economy is kind of a original meaning of Chinese, Jin Shi Ji Min, to transform the world and help the people, something like this, you know. It's kind of a political economy, political economy. And the, he engaging also with the world and the help people, the implied innate moral self-restraint and the Confucian sense of, uh, it's also big uh, gap to understand the Tian Chi, heavenly vacation. Uh, it's kind of calling, but it's not a calling from God. It's calling from your heart. If you listen to your heart, that means it's a faith. Otherwise, it's only a belief. Belief is not a faith, vice versa. So in that case, in that case, we should not substantialize God in the Western context. We should listen to your heart. That means the calling. Uh, then we back to Max Weber. Then we could 
have a bridge between Max Weber and the Confucius. Then we could identify the spiritual resource of Confucian entrepreneur as well as the uh, market economy in China. Um, otherwise, we don't have spiritual root. We can only imitate something ugly and finally badly. The second uh, Confucian entrepreneur of modern society is Chibusawa Ichi. You know, he's a father of the modern Japanese corporation. Um, so the most famous is his book, uh, but it's also his success, you know, 500 business ventures, as well as the uh, banks and so forth. Almost everything, you know, almost everything. Uh, the analects and the applicants, of course, also stressed the centrality of Ru Confucius in his own moral and intellectual development. development. And uh, he is so honored and uh, put on this currency to uh, renew uh, Fukuzawa Rukichi, you know. From Fukuzawa Rukichi to Shibuzawa Ichi, the Japanese uh, culture identity is being changed, uh, you can say, very deeply. So it's kind of a historical turn. Maybe we should not interpret too much of this, but it's a truth. Uh, nobility of spirit and business acumen. Okay, uh, you can, we can read the books from him. Uh, how to say a uh, moralized rationality, uh, maybe Matthias knows better. We have discussed this in 2015, in 2016, what's the meaning of moralized rationality? So it's very difficult to have kind of conscious or kind of sympathy, empathy, compassion to overcome the instrumental rationality uh, to, based on the reflection of enlightenment. So that's our job. It's kind of self-consciousness or self-awareness, according to Mencius. It's uh, invariably impersonal, societal, societal, historical, and uh, transcendental. But this transcendental attitude is in another kind of understanding. Okay. Uh, for Shibasawa Ichi, we have many things to, uh, to discuss, to discuss. I think uh, he had some good heritages for us. Uh, we came to Korea, is Ri Kyun Chun, Yu Ji Jun. He built up this, you know, uh, he was critical of the uh, Chung Song Confucian tendency to downplay the value of business people to society. With his concept of the hero merchant, which he himself credibly and uh, frankly embodied, Yu defended the necessity of profit seeking behavior, not in the petty or uh, consumeristic terms of mere self enrichment, but in the service of wider goals such as social benevolence and the national growth, especially the independence of Korea from the Japanese imperial colony. In that, in that uh, typical period, historical period. He died in 1914, in 1914. So uh, who else? Um, uh, I, I pray, I pray across fingers for the health uh, for Professor Dr. Uh, Carl Schicht. Yeah. He's, he's in good shape, I think. Now he's nearly 90 years old. Uh, he's in 90 year, years old. This, I quote it from Zhong Yong, you know, only those who are the most sincere, true and authentic can realize their own nature. If they can realize their own nature, they can realize the nature of others. If they can realize the nature of others, they can realize the nature of things. 
if they can realize the nature of the things, they can take part in the transforming and the nourishing process of heaven and earth. If they can take part in the transforming and the nourishing process of heaven and earth, they can form a trinity with heaven and earth. But I, you know, I take use of the word trinity, but it's similar meaning. If you listen to the voice from your heart as a kind of face, if you don't substantialize God, you could understand what I'm talking. So, what are Russian Harrison? Okay. Young Anderson, he is my teacher's teacher in at Harvard University. He's one of many scholars to have argued that with certain notable exceptions, such as uh, those celebrated above, the status of merchants over the long arc of Confucian intellectual history has largely been low. Um, we respect we respect political power, but don't play the wealth power in the China tradition. It, it's initiated from Mencius. I don't want to uh, discuss too much here. You know, the balance between power and the wealth is always a big topic, no, uh, no matter in Western uh, society or in China society. Basically speaking, in China history, always the political power dominates the wealth since Han Wudi to now. But for the Western society, always the capital power, the money power dominates the political power. The king should borrow some more money from the businessman for his army, for his war. That's, that's really ridiculous, but it's true. It's another topic, not for today. Today is just a brief introduction of Lu Shang. Uh, from pre qin time to Han Dynasty, Max Weber explained this tendency to disparage business people by comparing the unified China of the post war states period with the Roman Empire. No, you know, no motivation to entertain business people during Qing and Han Dynasty. I don't mind your attitude. Before Qin unification, every kin really, really uh, care the businessman. Otherwise, they will evacuate to another country. You will lose fortune. Like today, I can immigrate to somewhere else, you know. So who's responsible for the uh, anti, you know, business stance? Partly because of Confucian scholars at the Han Dynasty, uh, you can check the debate on salt and iron, Yan Tie Lun. You know, Max Weber says this also. Uh, Xu Fuguan has a good study on Yan Tie Lun between the Confucian scholars and the government officials. The Confucian scholars won't try to uh, fight against the government oriented the business control, but they made a mistake. Uh, they want to, how to say, deny all the business behavior in the name uh, of the agriculture uh, priority. So they lost the original teaching of Confucius and uh, Mencius. So that's a problem. Uh, but the emperor, the government, is always uh, the key reason. It's from uh, from uh, legalist voices, from the uh, you know Fa Jiang, not Confucian school, not Confucian school. Uh, uh, excuse me, Doctor Wan. This is all very very interesting, but because of the time, can you please try to wrap up in five minutes? Oh, sure. Can you, did you hear me? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, this is really, really fascinating. Okay, right? I have a 15 minutes. I'm checking okay. my clock. Uh, no, we will finish. My, I will, I... Um, it must be a mistake because uh, we have a panel afterwards. So if you could try to finish.
uh, within five minutes because I we have a few more. Maybe you can try to uh, also talk a little bit during the panel, if possible. Of course. Okay, I will finish uh, within five minutes. Thank you. Uh, it's Thank all you. on the heaven. You check the map. Okay. Thank you. The government Thank doesn't care. Welcome. And then it's from Han to Song Dynasty, from Song to Ming Dynasty, as well as uh, Minqing Dynasties. You know, uh, the modern after monarchy, 1911 revolution, and you know, a Rong family. You know, he he became the vice president of China. And uh, after monarchy, uh, Lu Zofu, he served the society, society in making life easier. Uh, he has contributed a lot to the country uh, with 1 million people and uh, 1.5 million tons equipment evacuated from Yitang to Chongqing. Uh, and after 1949, sorry, the business world is like this, Gong Si He Yin, and the people's com community. Uh, you know, uh, laws against uh, speculate, speculation and uh, uh, profiteering, Toji Daoba, we only repealed in 1982. So only 40 years ago, uh, just one generation. So don't argue too much regarding the today China. We have a long way to go. So after 2012, we have to understand. And uh, now I summarized as kind of the three gorges of China uh, modern world. Uh, we have this kind of uh, generation by generation. Each generation can solve only his own generation problems. We can't do much, we can't do less. Uh, now, Russia in the future, we can discuss maybe on this uh, panel uh, reflection on enlightenment, new challenges, new business eco ecosystem, and new business civilizations. Uh, we think we don't have Rushan so far, uh, but everybody is on the way to be a Rushan. Uh, the China own uh, problem, the reflection on enlightenment, what the money can't buy. Okay, so the legacy of Western enlightenment is uh, with. We now understand is a local value with a global significance. And the Confucian school is also a local value with global significance if we work hard. Otherwise, solutions, maybe some solutions, maybe not, because we have bounded the rationality, but the boundless globalization. So how to understand the bounded rationality is a big problem for us. So new challenges. Okay, somebody mentioned this UN development and uh, centralization and decentralization during this uh, uh, digital period. So common prosperity, the ideal should be the picture at the left, but the actual situation is the picture at the right, uh, unfortunately. So we have to do something. Uh, Newton Field, you attended this forum, self-consciousness in the new business civilization. Yeah, we are trying hard to develop something and also the CEO round the table in, 19, in 2019, they have some kind of statement. They have one, two, three, four, five KPIs, not only the stakeholders interest, but some four more interests, including suppliers, communities, and uh, employees, of course, and customers. Uh, what can we do? So we need the spiritual resources from all X-Age civilizations. It's kind of, uh, uh, how to say, the tension is there, what can we do? And uh, conclusions is uh, carb uh, carbon uh, neutrality and the civilization of uh, uh, among dialogues. is kind of a sec second actual age civilization. It's not only the challenge of Confucian entrepreneur, it's a challenge of any other or X age civilizations. So heaven engenders humans can bleed. So if the human being behavior badly, we will be finished very soon. So it depends on us. So from three teachings, Confucian, Buddhism, Taoism, to six teachings, uh, 
Jewish, a Christian, and a Muslim, you know, from secular humanism to a global ethic, so through dialogues among civilizations. And uh, perhaps the trouble with Confucianism is also the trouble with the modern world. So we have same trouble, we need the same effort. And finally is I and the zoo, you know, I and the zoo uh, is integrated with each other, not I and eight. It's uh, uh, not foe and friend. Some stupid people always ask the question, China is a friend or foe. It's also due to the dualism. It's due to such a kind of mindset. We should overcome the dualism mindset. Otherwise, always black and white, evil and good, friend and foe. Then we will be in big trouble. Uh, we have something like Confucian tradition and entrepreneurship. Uh, it's organized many years. So finally, entrepreneurship spirit, a rich life to an enriched life and an enlightened life. So everybody will be happy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wang. This is great. And this is also the first time that I actually heard um, someone talking about Rushang, Confucian business person from this historical uh, philosophical perspective and i was thinking i didn't I, I i did a very bad job introducing you i was thinking you know you talk about lu xiangshan being a business person and who actually was able to understand mentions the best or better than anybody anybody else and i was wondering maybe because you were also a business leader and then they actually worked in the business field before you went on to get doctoral degree uh, with uh, Professor Du Weiming. So maybe your experience also put you in a very, very dif different um, position and you actually understand and appreciate Confucius scholars, a Confucian uh, business person um, so much better, so, so much more in depth. This is really fascinating. Thank you so much. Actually, your talk has aroused a lot of interests. If you uh, would look at the chat box, um, I also need to thank uh, Matthias. Matthias is actually an expert in Chinese. He knows a lot more Chinese uh, about Chinese culture than I do. And he also wrote a lot about many of the uh, business leaders in China. So if you are interested, um, you can um, try to find his work and he's writing as well. Um, because of the time, I would love to go on. And I asked Ernst if we could have a few more minutes. He said, no. <laughs> so um, we'll have to finish by 5.30 and we still have a few more panel members. So I, I don't have to talk, but then I do have two more guests. I would like them to uh, briefly introduce about what they do. The first one to go is Mr. Uh, Chen. He actually is the CEO of uh, Ward Clippers, um, uh, uh, part of a Chinese, I mean, affiliate uh, subsidiary of Ward, Clip, um, Ward Clippers Corporation, the U.S. founded in, um, uh, in the U.S. a hundred years ago, over, a little over a hundred years ago. Um, so here, Mr. Chen, are you there? I would like um, to ask him to briefly introduce um, what he did, um, how he benefited using Confucius teachings to turn the company around. Because when he took over in uh, 2010, the company, people were on a on, uh, uh, big strike. And um, he, you know, I mean, when he took over, it was really, you know, under the crisis. And then accidentally, he actually, uh, you know, bumped into um, Confucianism and then started seriously um, looking into that and learned and applying by doing. And then um, the company is totally different. So I'll let him briefly introduce uh, what he has achieved as an example. And then afterwards, um, Dr. Alim Berich, my colleague here, who's been teaching uh, Western uh, ethics, I mean, not Western, but ethics, including both East and the West. So I would like uh, to ask him to share his view on 
East and West, um, um, you know, Confucianism from a Western perspective. So maybe the rest, um, I, I mean, I would suggest you look into the chat box. It's so rich. There's a lot of information there. And I also appreciate our Indian colleagues. Um, I wish we could continue this dialogue, if you don't mind. Maybe we can have, um, you know, virtual meetings like this and then exchange ideas. We can, I would love to hear Islams, Christians, and Indian, you know, different perspectives so that we can actually understand each other better and appreciate the diversity better. And then together, we probably can help make this world a little better place for, for us all. Um, so next, Mr. Chen, are you ready? Yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon to everyone. So first, thanks, uh, me, uh, Professor Fu, you know, to uh, offer me good, good opportunity to uh, share our, you know, co, uh, co learning to uh, anybody. Okay, the, maybe I can share my PPT first. Uh, Can you see my PPT, my screen? Yeah, Mr. Chen, yes, it's fine. Sorry, just a moment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. The first uh, two slides I want to uh, love to introduce about war. So, uh, so the global war expert at men's uh, care and uh, hair cutting uh, beauty tools we build uh, first creeper in the world, you know, in uh, 2019. So we have, uh, you know, totally we have uh, 23 subs. So we have uh, eight, you know, operational center in the world. So we have uh, over, you know, the 3,500 employees in the world. So uh, the second slide, you know, I want to share, you know, the water transition load map from uh, OEM to uh, you know, ODM, OPM, then the last, we are placing a uh, platform building. So by, uh, you know, the confusion, <coughs> humanistic, you know, the management transition. So I joined war, I joined war in uh, 2009. So, uh, you know, starting from uh, OEM, you know, stage. So that's the roadmap. So the, the next slide I want to share, you know, the starting from a cha uh, transition <clears throat> in 2009, I, 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 I take lead, you know, transition by uh, lean playlist. The, the no, slides are not moving. It's not turning. Still in the cover page wall. It's not moving. Now it's okay? No, it's not moving. It's not turning. Can you see here? Yeah, yeah, now we can, yes. Now it's okay? Yes. Thank okay, you. okay, that's, a, that's a, you know, the totally uh, uh, transition load map, you know, starting from OEM, ODM, OPM, uh, platform beauty, through, uh, you know, the confu Confucian, confu Confucian, you know, uh, humanistic, you know, management transition. Then, the, can you see this side now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. okay. So the, the uh, we uh, I uh, I joined uh, I joined work in uh, two thousand nine. So I uh, take lead, you know, to uh, to uh, pursue transition, you know, starting from uh, lean uh, practice by uh, you know confusion, uh, uh, confusion, you know, uh, <coughs> humanistic, you know, management. So I just get to learn, you know, uh, you know, confusion culture starting starting join a war. Before, uh, before uh, you know, war, I have nothing to know, you know, about, you know, the Confucian culture. So that's, uh, I, uh, I summarize, uh, you know, being a uh, blacklist house like this. So top one is, uh, you know, uh, all staff uh, participation, you know, you know the, the bottom, bottom line uh, is the uh, care for, you know, people. So, the, you know, the two laws to, uh, to uh, take lead, you know, transition by lean, you know, Two, uh, two ways, one is from uh, starting point must be from top, from top to bottom. Then, uh, you know, the, the second, you know, way is from bottom to uh, up. 
So the core, you know, core transition by uh, management, you know, style transition from a traditional to a uh, confusion, you know, the humanistic, you know, uh, management style, you know, the by uh, uh, top four, you know, top four, you know, the, the, <clears throat> the management roles and responsibility by a top management. The number one is the service. You know, we are from a standpoint of, uh, of a management, you know, we regard, you know, uh, subordinated, especially, you know, uh, you know, direct label, you know, is our internal customer. That's why we put number one, that, you know, pop, uh, top management have to provide service to the subordinators. The second is the incentive. No matter, you know, the, you know, our, you know, subordinators, they approach our target or not, but we have to, if, uh, you know, they make a progress, we have to explain the incentives to them. The num number three is that, you know, the top management must be a consultant, must be act as a consultant. Number four is that, you know, must be act, act as a mentor. That's, you know, the top four roles and responsibility, responsibility to uh, top management. So, uh, okay, that's better. You can see this now? Yes, we see the uh, slide four right now. Yes, yes. So that's, uh, I summarize the uh, lean practice as, uh, you know, lean house like this. If we, uh, we, if we, if we uh, realize all of them, that means equal to lean best practice in China. Uh, everybody knows uh, it's, uh, it's not so easy in China to uh, practice, uh, you know, lean in the uh, manufacturing field. But, you know, the, for uh, for war, you know, we uh, achieve, you know, the uh, successful, you know, blacklist, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, the mostly, you know, counts on, uh, counts on leading by uh, Confusion, you know, uh, humanistic, you know, management uh, style transition. Can you see my uh, screen now? Go, go next, please. Right now, it's still slide four. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you just go, yeah, there, life value right now. Uh, okay, okay. What's the purpose for, for uh, you know, for a company, you know? I summarize, you know, the, the company, the, the one of the purpose for company, you know, is uh, to uh, create, you know, combination of uh, value. So I, I summarize, you know, top, that's a uh, top four, top, uh, top, uh, top four value, value. Number one is, uh, you know, the create economic value. So number two is uh, create, you know, knowledge, the new knowledge, you know, uh, value by uh, innovation. So number three is, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the one company ha yeah, have to create, you know, social value. So the number four is the life value. The relationship, you know, like this. So uh, top three, you know, economic value plus an, uh, knowledge value and social value, you know, should be surrounded by a life value. So the last, uh, the next is, the, you know, the how to uh, sustain, you know, <clears throat> our business by uh, uh, Evergreen uh, three model, uh, G, uh, Evergreen G model. Can you see this uh, this slide? Uh, no, it's still on values. Please oh, go okay. there. Okay, thank you. Yes, now it's moved. The tree, the tree model. Yeah, ever Evergreen uh, G model. Yes. So from uh, this uh, Evergreen uh, G model, yeah, we we uh, you know the top, you know what uh, what we are uh, uh, what our uh, output. So we have two output uh, from, uh, from uh, you know, the, the customer same point. So we are uh, delivering the, the fruit to uh, our, you know, commercial, uh, you know, customer. Then uh, from a standpoint uh, of uh, management, so we have to deliver this fruit to our, you know, the, uh, you know subordinator, especially, you know, a direct label. So from, uh, you know, social charge, you know, uh, <clears throat> society, we have to uh, deliver output flu, uh, fruit to, uh, to uh, uh, pay back, you know, society plus, uh, you know, the industry. That's, uh, that's our output, the purpose for output. So the from uh, in the middle, you know, the, the branch, the, you know, stands for, you know, the, the, the tools and, uh, you know, some uh, methods. 
then uh, you know the the truck the truck stands for you know seats management system. So in the in uh, in the body, you know the the roots, the the you know the roots as uh, you know stands for you know the you know, the people you know talent. So uh, social you know social you know stands for you know the the company value uh, plus you know the Confucian uh, Confu Confucian culture. You know from from uh, this. Uh, Evergreen uh, tree model, you know, is easy to understand, you know, what's the purpose for, for, uh, you know, learning, uh, learning, you know, business for, to uh, one company. Also, what's the relationship, uh, you know, between the, the, the tools and the math, ma uh, you know, methods and, you know, system uh, within also the, you know, the, the how to say the, the uh, foundation. So, th can you see the, the next slide, maybe no. Okay, the last slide. Last slide, you know, build, uh, build to last model by, uh, we call the four plus one. The four, that's, uh, you know, the, that's, uh, you know, the, the, the smart, you know, manufacturing. Then the number four, uh, number four is a web base. Number three is the automation. Then uh, you know number four is a is a link. So link should be uh, you know so <coughs> top three. You know the uh, smart manufacturing web based automation should be surrounded by link. So the foundation is the Chinese tradition uh, culture. That that's all. Very much, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chen actually insisted that he does not speak well enough English, but I think we all understood him. So, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chen. Um, you made yourself clear. He's actually um, like Mr. Wu um, of Good Arc. He's also trying very hard to, to learn, by the way, and then uh, along the way, and then he would explain and present what he understood and share that with his employees. So right now, all the company, I mean, the company is actually doing a lot and he's very uh, creative. Like he established a uh, classic reading school for the uh, employees kids. And those kids would be, um, I mean, between first grader and, and the middle school. So I think it was six or seven to 14 maybe. And then they, the Hong Yi Shu Tang, Hong Yi Shu Yuan, Tian Zhong. Yes, yes. And then the parents would be the teachers there, and then they would be inspired by what the kids were doing, how they, the kids changed them, their behaviors, and then the parents would actually be inspired, and then take what they were, their inspirations to the workplace, and share that with coworkers. So it's a very um, interesting way. I mean, he did not push anyone. Mr. Chen did not push any of the employees to learn, but he tried to work with the managers and then let the managers be the role models and try to inference to the workers. And we also have written the case uh, on the wall and the case is now being um, included in the Harvard Business uh, uh, School case case bank uh, we wrote in Chinese but it's now turned into English so if anyone is interested you could also check that out now I'm going to ask Dr. Bell my colleague and also the ask him to share his view on uh, what we've uh, talked about um, Dr. Wan talked about and then see what he has to say I need a uh, ping ping. I would need to know who to make co host for this. Uh, what is the, the name? I don't see the name you said. There's one in Chinese characters. Is it that one? I asked you to uh, replace Alim with was QQ. I'm sorry. Yeah, QQ was to be uh, one of the members, but then he had to teach on um, the last minute because of the COVID. Right. And then I asked you, but then you were too busy to do that. Uh, Alim is right next to me. So. Oh, so no need to make anyone. I no, just no, no. Yeah, you, you told That's me fine. that you were too busy. Yeah. Okay. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and to participate today. I actually don't have any slides to share. I just want to share a few 
thoughts and remarks because I think it would be much more interesting to go into the Q&A uh, as soon as possible. So uh, my name is Alain Beveridge. I'm a colleague of Professor Fu here at the University of Nottingham. And I don't really consider myself an expert, more, more of a, a curious uh, scholar and a lucky collaborator who gets to learn a lot uh, by working with Professor Fu and some of the others uh, who are uh, part of this panel. Uh, now, I teach the, uh, the Business Ethics and Sustainability course at our university. So for me, uh, one of my interests is how to introduce uh, some of these ideas to our students, uh, students uh, who are undergraduate students at our university, also MBA students whom I teach, uh, who I believe should be exposed uh, to these ideas as early as possible. And normally in a, in a typical uh, Western university curriculum would be exposed only to uh, Western uh, ethical theories and philosophies. And uh, I've, uh, I've attempted to do that. I think uh, something I I've, uh, picked up several new ideas from, from the presenters today, which I look forward to incorporating into my future classes. But um, I think another uh, big interest for me and maybe something that we can uh, address in our panel is how some of these uh, ideas and uh, principles can be balanced uh, uh, with the imperative of uh, business leaders to uh, meet the demands of uh, shareholders and investors in uh, modern day uh, financial markets. And, uh, you know, the, something that I, you know, we hear often from business leaders who are trying to practice uh, uh, more humanistic uh, principles or apply them in their practice, including Confucian humanistic principles, is that there is a tension between these principles and meeting the demands of certain investors, certain shareholders. There are many uh, stories of companies that have uh, yeah, have uh, been under attack from from investors because who see some of these practices as being uh, costs, as being uh, expenses, as not being compatible with shareholder primacy. So one thing that I think is, uh, is of great importance and interest is, is how companies can balance this and how they can protect themselves uh, against such, uh, such attacks. Uh, and uh, maybe that's something that we can, we can discuss in, in the panel. Uh, my personal interest is in B corporations. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of the other uh, people here have heard of those. Uh, and how those try to find that balance between uh, serving the uh, greater needs of the community, the needs of uh, employees, uh, various stakeholders, as well as the demands of uh, shareholders. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, I think we probably want to move into a more open discussion with uh, the audience members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alim. Um, I actually, I, I, um, I would like to maybe start the discussion because I saw the discussion. Matthias actually uh, posted some explanation trying to help the uh, audience to make the connection between Ch Chinese uh, con concepts and then some of the Western concepts. And I saw this um, human, uh, I mean, Confucian humanism is being uh, compared to CSR. And I would like to ask uh, Dr. Wang, see what you have to say about the two, between the two, uh, confusion humanism and the corporate social responsibility in the West. Are they comparable? What do you think? Thank you. It's for me, I think. <laughs> mm, we, we first must know if one word could characterize the entire history of Chinese philosophy, that word would be humanism. But it's not a secular humanism as a Western tradition from enlightenment. It's a kind of uh, humanism uh, not denying the su supreme power, you mean, something uh, uh, you know, transcendental uh, is kind of a, you know, unity of man and heaven. So when we talk humanistic spirit, we must talk seal. We must talk uh, transcendence or God. Otherwise is uh, rootless and uh, it's meaningless. That's one point. The second point is CSR 
incorporate the uh, social responsibility is more or less something like kind of pressure of capital. If some kind of pressure uh, of the, how to say, uh, kind of marketing uh, and uh, the implication of CSR in the company only becoming some sort of show off. Uh, we have discussed this in 2013, 14 with, uh, uh, you know, many colleagues from uh, Basel University and uh, German. Uh, so I think more or less, uh, we should back to the mindset. We should uh, uh, embody the civil religion. Otherwise, we have no way to solve this problem. Only kind of show off, only kind of use utility of market money, market, the marketing budget to be used as a kind of charity or philanthropy. It's all very bad game. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're cutting off. I mean, did you finish? Because you, um, your sound disappeared. Uh, we cannot hear you. Okay. That's my answer. Okay, okay. Thank you. We heard most of it. The last part was, was um, cut off, but I think we got the gist of it. Um, I would like to ask Matya, would you like to say something about that in response to that topic, Matthias? You are mute. You should turn on your... Yeah, now, now can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Um, well, basically what uh, Dr. Wang is describing has been a collaborative effort from Peking University and Tubing University for oh, almost eight or nine years now to have a discussion about what corporate social responsibility and um, um, Confucian entrepreneurship and so on have in common what is different. And it's, it's, it's um, what I found uh, in, my, in my own research is that one good way of making this easier is looking at concrete examples. So when we have, for instance, um, Mr. Walt Chien here, uh, 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 Chien, I think Walt is the company, right? Um, and um, other good examples like Unyembo, which you, uh, you, you suggested this morning, Professor Fu, and others like uh, Mao Zhongqun, who is on this picture in the middle, right in the middle, who has been covering with my face. Um, they try to use um, traditional understanding and first learn themselves. So basically they being, became students of Chinese philosophy themselves, spending years of reading, and then they gradually understood, okay, Confucianism has to be practiced in order to be of any use. And that means that they um, um, also come up with ideas of, of concrete um, humanistic management principles and also um, ideas of, of how that uh, concrete measures like uh, environmental protection, social awareness, going out to neighboring communities and helping them out. And there's a whole range of concrete examples. And this, I think, helps very much to understand what it is about. Otherwise, we're only talking about all these lofty, great concepts, but it, it is of very little use often to a business audience uh, because there is a bit of a disconnect between not just the Chinese philosophy and Western philosophy, but also between the different worlds of business and academia and philosophy. And these concrete cases, which I Sure, yeah, Professor Fu, you might still explain a bit more. It can help us to, to bridge these gaps. Thank you. That's just my comment here. Thank you very much. Any other uh, questions in the audience? We can take a couple of questions, uh, short ones, because of the time. Uh, we have to finish in 10 minutes. Anybody in the audience? Um, if not, I would like to ask, because I was just amazed how much Dr. Wang knows. Um, I knew that he was extremely knowledgeable, but I didn't realize to that extent. So I would like to ask him to personally reflect on his per you know, personal um, individual growth, um, like that how he would reflect on what he has learned. Oh, there is a, a question here. Okay. Um, there is a, a colleague from Bangladesh. I, I have to 
Well, Wang Shi, I can always ask you later, but let's take the audience, the question from the audience first. Um, uh, Dula, is that how you say your name? Dula? Uh, from Bangladesh. And question, okay, Dula has a question. If answer is positive, eh? where is that? Where are the two questions? Question, can you say it? Or you cannot? Uh, question two, if answer is positive, question one, what is the percentage? And do you have any challenges? Work, persons with, oh, disabilities. Okay, challenges, do you have, do you have experience working with people with disabilities, uh, Dr. Wang, or, or to the panel? I mean, anyone? If answer is positive, then the percentage, uh, what is the, what percentage? And do you have any challenges working with people with disabilities? Actually, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Dr. Wang, do you have, do you have experience working with people with disabilities? Of course. And I worked in La Khushali, Bordeaux in 2002. Uh, we have many, uh, not many, several, uh, uh, like uh, the workers, he, they cut the rubber liners of the butterfly valves. Um, it's a very good tradition. Uh, it's a big topic, actually, from this Bangladesh friend. It's kind of a philanthropy or public welfare or charity. What's the spiritual root? Uh, in Chinese tradition, according to our classic of rituals, Di, uh, you should give some uh, uh, professional uh, training to the disabled people. For example, the blind people is good for music. Then they can be paid uh, rather than you just give them money, you know. Uh, they should be employed and paid. It's much better than some kind of a donation. Uh, it's same like the farmland. You pick up the uh, the rice after the cutting of the harvest time. You make this incoming from your own uh, labor, uh, your own uh, working. So that's more dignified and respectable. It's same from uh, Bible, same tradition from Bible. Uh, the big, the famous picture is uh, uh, the farmers in France. Uh, to pick up the uh, uh, the wheat and rice after the harvest. So uh, I think uh, that's a common doubt between West and the East. Uh, how to treat disabled, disabled people is it's very long, long discussion. We should not go back to the ancient Greek tradition to have some slave slaves, you know, to to deny the, the right of the disabled people, the weak people. You know, the people are weak, need the people uh, the stronger to protect. That's why we should, we should uh, avoid the herd uh, the immunity, you know, in China. That's why, because the death of the weak people uh, should show the dignity of the living people. If somebody died without dignity, that we have living for nothing, our life will become meaningless. That's the tradition of Confucius' uh, teaching. Um, okay, Matthias, please. Um, I just want to re uh, report uh, a concrete case from one of my interviews. Uh, I interviewed quite a few people. I think this was a case with um, yeah, a Sujo Gudo, a good arc in, 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 um, in uh, Sujo. And one one uh, factory worker told me that they have a culture of trying to integrate people with uh, disabilities quite a bit. And he told me a case of a person who was not able to speak. Uh, he was mute. And uh, the problem is that in Chinese society, disabled people traditionally haven't been not necessarily been treated that well. And it's it's gradually changing now. But in society, often people with disabilities are invisible. You don't see them at all. This is changing quite a, a bit, especially also since the 2008 Paralympics. But in this case, this, this worker came in 
Berlin and he could only communicate by writing simple characters and he was included in the team and he he, he flourished he became very good at his work and and this member said that he's one of the best workers in his whole team in spite of him being um, disabled because he saw that other people value him and he became a positive a, a, a team member that brought the whole team forward and this kind of thinking is a concrete example of how humanistic management is not only helping the disabled people but helping the others who are not disabled and i found that very interesting because that was a blue color worker telling me in this interview thank you very much thank you very much matthias uh because of the time we don't we don't have a lot of time to go on but as matthias said that it's a uh oh uh, dr wang said it's a huge topic and matthias is correct that china is changing changing a lot in terms of um, policies toward people with disabilities. I happen to be doing some research work with my uh, former doctoral student. And then we actually have been looking at people with IDDs and people with IDDs are the most difficult part in terms of getting employment because they their intellectual abilities. But then there are actually over 20 now, I mean, 20 plus, car washing places that was the first one was founded by a father who wanted his son to actually be able to go out and be able to get a job and make a living himself and then he actually found a model and that business model has been introduced to many other places so that is as an example but then there are also many other companies trying to promote inclusive um, employment trying to even mix um, uh, people with disabilities and with normal people. But then there are also um, companies trying, I mean, people, you know, I guess they are no more conscious and they're trying to actually help people with disabilities to find jobs that would actually fit their, event, uh, their what they can do and then also um, train them to uh, do things. So I, I think it's it's getting more and more, um, you know, people are better aware. We actually uh, were able to uh, show that uh, with certain effort that people who are consumers of public resources can be turned into public service providers as well. So, um, uh, you know, if you are interested in uh, knowing more, um, maybe you can uh, get my uh, email address. I will we'll send you the, actually Alim also is working with me on that. So you can um, get, uh, write an email to me and I'll try to send you uh, information on that. Anyway, I want to thank every one of you, in particular, Dr. Uh, Wang and, and Mr. Chen and Alim for contributing and also Matthias for contributing to this uh, forum. I think I, I learned a lot myself. I'm sure all of you more or less learned something from, from the great presentation. Uh, Dr. Wang, I'll chase your work later, trying to learn more from you. This is a really amazing. Um, anyway, so thank you very much. And you have my email there and then um, if you're interested in um, exchanging ideas and getting to know more about um, each other's culture, let me know. Maybe we can have some free, uh, I mean, casual virtual meetings. Now that we don't have travel, we can do this when we want to as a tea break, you know, a couple of hours here and there periodically. If you are interested, we can do that. All right. Anybody, Dr. Wang, do you want to say something or... or uh, so far, so good. It's a big honor for me to be here. And uh, I learned a lot from you, from your colleagues, and uh, from uh, my old friend, Matthias Nietenfeuer. And uh, cross fingers for our human being societies. If God is really dead, then CSI is meaningless. That's my conclusion. And Thank Matthias, you. if you are interested, we can include you and pick, pick on your brain as well, because he's so knowledgeable. Anyway, thank you all. Um, I, I know Ernst is getting anxious. So now the mic is back to you, Ernst. Thank you so much, Ping Ping. Thank you to all the speakers and your panelists, all the work that you put into this. I